Brian Callan has uh, made another statement regarding the fighter in the rinks. I know you guys have been keeping abreast in this whole situation. It's been a pretty fun to watch from the outside looking in. Um, if you're not aware, Brian Callan was accused of rape and all these other sexual deviant um, activities a few weeks ago by four women. Um, four stories of varying levels of, se of severity that seemed really crazy at the beginning but then the more you start to read into it to it the more you get you got an understanding of Brian Callan as a comedian you probably got to see okay maybe there is an element of truth to it but the story just seemed a bit too crazy in it to begin with um, but of course the context of it that makes it more interesting is the fact that a few weeks prior to that Crystal Lee was accused of something similar and these guys were sobbing and crying on camera and pretending they didn't know the guy deleting all his pictures from his from their pro social media profiles and essentially never mentioning his name ever again um, when he was somebody that they were very close with toiled around with and hanged around with quite a, you know an extent uh, quite a long time especially if you're Brian Cannon you did a 10 minute podcast with him for the best part of 10 years it felt like so to suddenly turn around and pretend like you never knew the guy because he's involved, he's got himself involved in something a bit messy, really made people turn against these guys because they felt as if they were being disloyal. So when it eventually came to, when cancer culture eventually came to Brian Callan's doorstep, some people saw it as sweet karma, sweet justice, that he was now being accused of these things. I don't think that's true. I still think he should have his day in court. I don't agree that it's a good thing that he's being subjected to this, to this, these level of accusations and have his career entirely be put on hold and eventually maybe essentially over um, due to accusations that haven't been proved in a court of law or he hasn't been able to defend himself in any way shape or regard but regards to that re respect Callan decides to fight back um, which a lot of people don't usually do he didn't want to put his head under the sand and decided to announce he's going to do a podcast on the weekend and the podcast didn't happen and then they turned back around and said we're going to do another podcast behind a paywall people were thinking what's going on why are you doing a patron now and it basically came to light that cast media this uh, production company that's basically in charge of I guess handling the the maybe the sponsorships and marketing element of major podcast shows um, all over LA were basically put in the kabush or put the hold on Brian Callan getting back on the show and maybe because the fire and the kid is their main cash cow uh, maybe Brendan Shaw decided hey it's best that you don't come back on the show we don't want to spoil our main cash cow this is allowing us to basically keep our heads above water whilst all the comedy clubs are closed whatever happened Brian didn't go back on the show they decided to do a show called the fire and the rings behind the paywall which I mentioned previously uh, they put one episode out which essentially turned into you know Brian Callan uh, moaning about council culture which is you know it's his right to do so but at the time I felt it was a little bit um, done in bad taste I just thinking if you're accused of something as serious as he is accused of you probably owe it to yourself and you owe it to your accusers to maybe take some time away reflect on the allegations build up a defense and try and get it nipped in the bud as soon as you can before you try gallivanting around as if nothing's happening you know essentially carrying on your podcasting career um that should be the way to go about things. Now, again, it's not my place to tell people how to do things, but that would have probably been the best way to do it, to kind of address it, because you know that any platform that you go on, especially in cancel culture world, usually people that think you're guilty, they're gonna, just going to attack that platform. If he appears on people's shows, somebody's gonna they're going to start sending emails to the sponsors of whatever show he's appearing on. They're going to maybe start copywriting, striking it, whatever they're going to do. Like People that are involved in that cancel culture world, they don't really have no chill. They're going to do whatever they can to take away your ability to make a living, especially if they think you're guilty, and especially if they think you're not treating allegations as seriously as you should be. So... Optics-wise, Callum probably did the wrong thing by trying to start up this fight in the ring show. Now, in his defense, he could be like, hey, I need to. I need some money, right? Comedy clubs aren't open. I don't rely on my parents. As Even though people think my parents are rich, I don't rely on them. I want to be in a position where I can support myself with covering myself with lawyers, with sort of things. Regardless, you know, I've spent 10 years making this podcast. I'm not going to just give up my podcasting career because somebody decided to make up a story about me. Fair. But again, I still think it to himself to really have taken the allegation seriously and try to address it as best as he could um, and try to kind of get him so prove that he's innocent before recording a show. But he recorded a show and then I guess a new show is meant to be dropping this week and we've got an update here actually uh, that somebody uploaded on the Fire and the Kids subreddit so big up the Homeless Cats for that where he basically speaks about the lack of uh, shows up and coming and basically tells us that Powers That Be told him to not no more shows are going to be allowed uh, on the Fire and the Rinks uh, channel. I'm assuming he just can't do any shows with Brian with Brendan Shaw at all going forward. But this is his video kind of declaring the fact. Let's play it now. 
Beloved Patreon subscribers, uh, beloved, because I, I got to tell you, I can't thank you guys enough for signing up uh, in, in those kinds of numbers. And I know you guys are looking for fighter in the rinks. Well, we're doing everything we can to bring that to you. But right now, due to forces that are beyond our control, that is not possible. So. Well and again, what did I say before? These guys talked a big game about being on podcasts and not being controlled by anybody and able to do your own thing. But look, your guy is accused, your Cody is accused of some heinous crime and he can't even get on his own show to defend himself. If ever, if ever there was a, an example of being controlled and being just part of the normal Hollywood industry infrastructure, this is it. What we are going to do is bring you we're going to try to bring you as many shows as and as much content on Patreon as we possibly can. Try. Starting with a show that I'm doing with Sam Tripoli called Conspiracy Social Club, where Sam Tripoli is going to break down the latest conspiracies and I'm going to debunk it. And what in the absolute F? And if you know anything about Brian Cannon, you know he hates conspiracy theories, right? He always has a bit of a tip for tat with Eddie Bravo. Uh, when you do the fight companion so for him to come to a level of where he's having to accept doing a show with sam tripoli don't get me wrong sam tripoli is a good dude and he's he's been one of the only defenders of brian cannon he's been one of the people that have been beating the drum talking about you know friendship in the scene and people throwing people under the bus and saying that there's other powers that be are trying to take people out he's actually been one of the staunchest defenders of chris D'Elia and brian cannon so i think it's nice that they're kind of throwing him a bone and saying hey thanks for your support and you know for helping us out and basically giving him some money allowing him to do a podcast with him i think that's pretty cool but for Brian Cannon, this does go to show that it probably was ill-advised to decide to announce you're doing a show with Brendan and Shaw during these allegations still in the midst without really kind of dismissing them or kind of, you know, putting any evidence out there that basically... Because the story sounds a bit wild, don't get me wrong. But so far, we have no indication that he didn't do it. None, none, none whatsoever. He hasn't really given his fans an opportunity to back him up because he hasn't really provided any proof that he hasn't done the thing. Like Stevie Blue Eyes has mentioned some situation, but nothing else has happened. Now, again, maybe because there's a legal issue pending, but it really did owe it to himself to have done that prior to trying to launch a new show. It didn't make any sense. It did feel like a bit of a cash grab. Maybe it did. Maybe it's not actually a cash grab. It was just a him for a way to him for way he wanted to provide a way for himself to defend himself, but. <sighs> And on top of that, I'm working on another show called The Callan Report, which will be my hot take on events in the world as they're happening in real time. So I'm I'm personally looking for if the Callan Report is anything like uh, dropping knowledge back in the day on TFAT K, he's gonna have an issue. I'm not I'm not mad at it. The only problem I guess with Callan, let's continue. For this challenge, while we try to figure out a way to get back to what you guys knew as fighter in the rinks. Um, so I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your loyalty. And I promise you, I promise you, I will do everything I can and all of us will do everything we can to make this worth your money and your time. Trust us. And once again, I love you. Such a shame, innit, man? Brian's such a good dude, man. You really, you really hate, like, it's it's funny, innit? For, of, of, the, of, the, of the two guys, right? The one person you would have thought would have got themselves in some sort of issue. Again, you're not hoping it happens, but of the two dudes, you would have thought it would be Brendan. But it looks like Brendan's going to be the one that's going to have an actual stable career in Hollywood. He's going to be able to ride any kind of controversy, keep himself his head above water, and constantly coast until he gets to a level where he becomes a competent enough stand-up comedian where people stop taking the piss out of his stand-up, and his podcast continues to get successful, and he kind of goes into doing other things. You can see that happening in his future. But in terms of pure and utter talent, Brian Callan's the one in it. Like he's the funniest dude. He's actually the most introspective, worldly. Do you know what I mean? Like he's the guy that you would expect it to kind of really take advantage of the fact that they've got his podcast and really take it to the next level of his career, but he hasn't been able to. So the Callan report, not a bad idea, right? Not a bad idea to try and get on top of that, um, to try and make good of the money that's been um, given to them via Patreon. Cause I think they've got quite a lot of backers now, right? What is it now? Yeah. Bloody hell. Nearly 8,000. Oh, just over seven thousand. Um, paying what five fifty, five forty? What's that? Is that like fifty thousand or something? It's it's a lot of money, right? That they're getting per month. So there's obviously a demand for some kind of Brian Callan content. I'm not sure if this is more. This is probably more of an indication of how much the fans love Brian Callan as, as opposed to Brendan. I'm sure, or maybe the show in general. But regardless, I guess it's good that they're trying to do something to make good of the funds that they've been given. But th this also might just be the fans' way of kind of like saying thank you for the free entertainment you provided over the years, and here's our way to kind of get back to you and say, hey, we got your back. We're supporting you. That's brilliant. But I guess for Callan, the issue is that. He's never really had the best work ethic when it comes to the show, innit? Brian, Brennan's always complaining about him coming in late 
uh, not being clued up on the topics they're talking about, not be keeping abreast of current events or stories in general in current pop culture. He's a bit oblivious and kind of head in the clouds, concentrating to acting and all that sort of stuff. All that stuff is on the, you know, that's on pause. There's no acting. There's no stand up. There's no Hollywood. There's no going to slice, slice Stallone's house. That's over for him for the immediate future. So he probably owes it to himself to put everything that he can into making that podcast a success. Because if he can do it, it would be a great way to bounce back. It would be a great way to provide a platform for himself to talk about really important issues, get people on the show, make himself uncancelable in the future, and just basically build it out as a thing, innit? That would be pretty cool, I think, going forward. But again, has he got the work ethic to be able, or work eth ethnic, as uh, Brendan Shaw would say, to keep that going? to keep the calendar show going, to be producing and putting out two or three shows a week. Of course, you probably have to get his own producer in. I'm not sure if Shane will be able to balance doing The Fire and the Kid and the King and the Sting and everything else. Maybe he will be able to. I'm not too sure. But if he's if he's able to just turn up on time and do the show every week, twice a week, three times a week, he probably will do pretty well. I'm pretty sure his fans will still support him in that regard. Um, it's just a case of him being able to keep up to date with it. But again, like I said, I think it's just another indication that he should have never, ever tried to launch the fire in the rings in the first place in the midst of being accused of rape, man. It just didn't, it didn't sit right. Even if you're not guilty, he should have tried to, he should have tried to prove himself innocent first. Like, you know, Chris Hardwick did the same thing, right? Chris Hardwick was accused of something quite heinous from his ex-girlfriend and he took the time to kind of, you know, uh, allow the internal investigation from his network to take place. I think he was publicly cancelled by both platforms or both networks he was on. Uh, they eventually gave him both, both of his jobs back because the investigation basically proved that the girlfriend or his ex was a bit of a crazy woman. But Calendar needs to try and get the narrative out there or try to put some doubt in people's mind that those girls are what they're saying is incorrect because from what we're hearing so far it seemed like he's maybe contesting the story about the lady who said oh he would uh he asked me for fellatio in stage of in exchange for stage time that's the one story he's basically arguing against and some maybe the rape story but there's been no evidence to contrary to it right so far the women have basically proved that it possibly happened based on the accounts that they gave to their friends because that corroboration i'm not too sure but can hasn't really been given a strong enough defense as that he didn't do the he actually didn't commit the crime and even if he didn't commit the crime the story of the girl in the change room is already quite weird right going into a change room half naked uh pinning a girl up against the wall and kissing her again maybe there's some details left out in there maybe they were already dating prior we don't know but that story already seems crazy so to launch a podcast in the midst of that just seemed really ill-advised um again i understand he's fighting for his life he's got to save his career he's got kids to look after loads of panic comes in the air but he really did owe it to himself to kind of take a deep breath and maybe try and fight against those accusations first before launching it but also it's good to, to him to see i guess in his regard to see that you know the fans are still backing him there's obviously um some level of support out there and this is what you this was essentially what you fight for isn't it what you try and get in the industry for is to build up a fan base good enough that they can support you this is the this is the basically um this is basically uh the living personification of 1000 true fans isn't it right 1000 true fans are able to sustain him and keep um, his career going but it's interesting to see the developments going forward but yeah what an interesting time to be alive isn't it who would have thought in 2020 brian callan would be the one getting cancelled and having to do all these fucking flips and dips everywhere and brendan Shaw would be trying to hold the fire and the kid together which he seems to be holding together pretty okay for the most part he's got different co-hosts on it seems to be working okay but god oh my who would have guessed it who would have guessed it man la comedy scenes on fire <clears throat> amy kaufman is the seth simons of the west coast and she's just you know ending everyone's career out here so again if you're a comedian out there and you've got some skeletons in the closet you better open up your patreon and get going sooner rather than later because they're coming after you very very soon